I first learned about Archive, I was doing some undergrad research. I did like an REU um, at the University of Minnesota Twin Cities. And that was the first experience I had trying to use Archive, which is basically trying to put out a preprint that we had. And that was, um, that was interesting trying to learn all the quirks of how Archive works. I mean, I'm going to put use in air quotes, but the first time I used the Archive was when I was in high school. So this would have been in the 90s. And I found the Archive via the, the NASA Astrophysics Data System, uh, which I think I found through the Harvard Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics website. So there were, there were a few steps there, but I was, I already knew that I wanted to do something in particle physics and cosmology. And so eventually landed on the archive. And I think it was a good thing that I, I stumbled on it in a sense, because it just a little bit into my undergraduate career at Harvard, it actually became pretty important because looking at the archive is how I found that the papers about type 1a supernovae that Robert Kirshner and his team were publishing. And just to give some context, this was in the summer of 2000. So it was just a couple of years after cosmic acceleration had first been articulated as a problem in cosmology. And so I actually looked at a couple of Professor Kirshner's papers on the archive and sent him an email and said, hey, I like your papers. Can I have a job working for you? And that's actually what I did during the academic year as my work study job for the next two years. And so the archive helped me get into research. And that was my introduction to working with data from the Hubble Space Telescope was actually via that, that research opportunity. But the archive helped get me there. I'm wondering, was there a professor who told you, like, this is the archive, you need to look at the archive? Or was it something that you picked up from a peer? I honestly don't remember ever not using the archive <laughs> in terms of like, and at least in the capacity of doing research. So I don't exactly remember. I, I think it was just like, basically it was about getting sent links to papers and being told here are papers. And that's interesting about how ubiquitous the archive is, right? That yeah. um, you can't really remember a time in your career when you didn't know about it because it's such a central tool that um, as we progress in our careers, it's just like there in, in, in all of the different ways. People find out about new papers and new research by going to talks and looking at the archive. The archive is where we go to read papers. The reason I post on archive is just because it's literally necessary for my papers to go on archive um, because it is, it's just how people in my community uh, find papers. Like um, there's a website called SciRate and SciRate only pulls from archive. You can't get um, your paper on there, which is where a lot of um, people go to see new papers. You can't get on there if you haven't published on archive. And it's interesting the way that different websites have kind of built off of the archive. And that really, in some sense, tells you something, again, about the ubiquity and the centrality of, of archive. You know, when I was a postdoctoral fellow at the MIT Copley Institute for Astrophysics, we had morning um, coffee. I don't drink coffee, but we had morning coffee <laughs> where um, there were cookies that were put out. And then we all sat around with like a little projector and somebody scrolled through Astro PH archive from the night before. And we randomly pulled papers and did what's um, I think has come to be called like live archive, but this was often called like an informal journal club or um, archive coffee. It has a lot of different names where that was like a daily activity for the junior researchers in the Institute and the occasional professor who showed up to sit around. And there's a little bit of socializing, but also reading papers together, or reading titles and abstracts together. And from my view, that's part of how students um, learn how to read papers is actually through that social process of looking at the archive in a group together. I think the idea of just posting things on archive and um, letting people debate the ideas. It seems like sort of a ideal of, of, of um, how, how publishing papers and, and should, should go. We've talked about a lot of stuff, but I'll say one of the things that I'm really excited about with the archive right now is that um, I have really enjoyed talking with Eleonora Frasani and I'm, I'm excited to see what direction the archive goes in under her direction. I think that um, 
she was a really exciting hire for the archive. So I'm a member of Particles for Justice, and we organized a strike for Black lives in tandem with Shutdown STEM on June 10th, 2020. And um, one of the ideas that both groups, both Particles for Justice and Shutdown STEM had was what if we could get the archive and journals to participate and take the day off from um, you know, posting new papers. To, to really say like, this is a day that we're gonna focus on changing the material conditions under which black lives are lived, including the lives of black scientists. And um, we approached the archive about this. And this is, I think Eleonora had been on the job for maybe like a month and a half or two, two months at this point. And mm -hmm. I found Eleonora's response was really thoughtful. Like one of her first questions was, are black scientists involved in this conversation? But I would say for me, that was a turning point in my understanding that the archive was recognizing itself as not just a website, but as a role player in how science happens in the community, that they actually had a, a, a part to play beyond just like sitting there as like, you know, a repository for information, but also understanding that being a repository for information is an incredible location of power and that um, the archive could wield that power in, in ways that improve the lives of scientists. Often like people in my field treat archive as some website that's just sitting there and then that's the only way that you interface with it. But uh, yeah, it, it's, it's a really good point that like, um, there's a lot of power in, in archive as an entity, um, both in its ability to you know, provide free scientific knowledge, um, but also in its central like social role. Yeah, I think I think it's an uh, it's a, it's an important thing to recognize for sure.